Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we're going to continue our work on our Quattro Bra project, but I am filming this as a battle mat making tutorial. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a canvas battle mat and or canvas tarp, and then we're going to put uh, acrylic latex on it to create uh, a texture on this and then we will uh, flock it at the end uh, but I'm but I'm making this for my quattro bra project um, I'm going to show this off during my project videos but I'm also going to save these videos and then splice them together to make this tutorial that I'm filming right here all right so this is a six by nine eight ounce tarp uh, that I bought at the local hardware store. But you can see that it's wrinkled, right? Uh, it's very wrinkly. And before you start any work on your tarp, you need to iron it out. Now, I've got a ping pong table, which is a five by nine, but I figured I don't need to lay it completely out I'm just gonna, this step is really just the ironing. And then in once I get it done ironed, we're gonna actually go through and draw some initial designs on it so that I have my pattern. And that's what we're gonna do tonight. Okay, this line just represents where the table is going to end. And this is the piece that's gonna hang over. Absolutely, I'm not going to cut it. I don't. I already know I'm not going to cut it. I might even tuck it under and pin it or something to make sure that the the the, the mat is fixed firmly to the table. Might use some thumbtacks or something underneath it at the convention. Uh, but this is the point that I have to cover at least to this. I want to go a little over this so that, like I said, uh, well, if when we put a hill underneath it. It's going to, like if I put a hill underneath here, right, it's going to pull the blanket in this way. And then, so I would need a little bit more to go over the edge of the table, right? I'm not going to make extremely high hills. And if it's not exactly perfect, it's okay. All right, so let's get this kind of stuff out of the way just so you can kind of see what we're looking at. So this half of the map is right here. This is where the roads are and that's the main thing. Now there's going to be some rivers as well. Um, I'm going to have to draw the rivers on here but I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it right now. Alright so I just want to show you the east side. You've got, I think it's called Thule. Thule is going to be right here. right? You're going to have a bridge here, and I drew the river squiggly so I would know that it's a river, and the straight lines, even if they're curved, they're straight, are the roads. And then when you get down here, this is the beginning of the lake. Okay, so that's the lake, uh, or I guess it's a pond really. And then uh, that's going to be the east side of the map. So now what I got to do is start working on the other side of the map. Okay, so I got the roads and rivers on here. All right, now the way I taped the edges down was I used gaffer's tape. I don't know if you have any gaffer's tape, but if you do, it's very uh, fibery. And it, it's, it's super durable. It's kind of like duct tape, but better. Okay, and that's mainly so that when I put the caulk on when it wants to start expanding and stretching and stuff like that the tape will prevent that from happening the same same tan that i'm using for the roads i'm going to once i get the roads done then i'm going to go back and do the stream the clear coat on top of that and then when i put the brown on it's going to cover this overspray that i have here let's start with the main road Interesting. 
up to the crossroads. Now I want the road to be about the width of two inches. The cavalry bases are two inches and that's the size that I want the roads to be. You know, because I'm going over the edge, always, always over the edge. Okay, it does not have to be super thick. So basically I want it to be at least as thick as my putty knife. Because I'm going to come back at it with dark brown for everything that's not road. All right, guys, I'm making progress. Let me go ahead and finish all the roads, and then I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm stepping back, and I'm watching this absorb into the canvas. I think I have not put my caulk on thick enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another bead along here. This doesn't look thick enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera. Maybe you can see the rutledge. The rutledge. Yeah. And you see what I'm doing right there with the ruts? Okay, awesome. All right, guys. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the dark brown. And I want to do it in a section that's not going to get next to the river. We're going to do a dark, sec a dark section right here. Um... We're just going to lay out some dark brown in quite a chunk. You can see that was actually a lot. I'm going to use the, I'm going to use all of these putty knives, but uh, only I'm going to use the smaller ones when we're inside the areas here. I'm going to use the larger ones when I'm out here, and I'm going to use a medium sized one whenever I get a chance. But it looks like the large one I should be able to use right here. So here we go. This actually has kind of a purplish look to it, even though that says brown. Okay. Because that looked more brown to me. But that's okay. You notice I'm not getting next to the road. I will in just a minute. Give me some time already, dang! No. Um, okay. And I want to make this thick enough that it doesn't, that the uh, fabric doesn't shine through, right? And we're going to apply a little bit of a bead here, a little bit of a bead there. It doesn't have to be thick. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of texture up onto the road. I'm trying to make almost not exactly a perfectly straight line. 
because that wouldn't be natural. Okay. Getting into that little corner is proving to be difficult. So I'm going to scrape some of this off. Like so. Let me get right on in there. And remember what I said about making it thicker along the road? That's exactly what I'm thinking I'm doing. And I'm kind of trying to make it so that it is um, what's the word? Natural looking. guys I've placed down the brown and now as it's drying it is starting to look more brown uh, when I first was starting to put it down it did look kind of purple but now it's kind of looking brown uh, this is still going to be the river I still need to put the clear coat on that uh, to make it look wet uh, and another thing I'm gonna put uh, flock and grass and I might even drop a little spray paint on there just to kind of give it a variety of different colors but I'm also going to use a variety of different flocks on different areas so that's going to be after this dries so overnight I'm going to uh, sleep on it and when I come back tomorrow afternoon we'll start doing the flocking all right guys now the next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some spray paint just just simple can spray paint and i'm gonna just highlight and all i'm doing is i'm not covering the the now this is a this is a a, a nutmeg color that i'm using i'm going to use tan um i can't i don't know what color that is cedar and then i'm going to use like a 
a woodland green. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend a lot of these colors on the map, but I'm doing it very lightly, not heavily, so that when I go to flock and you can see through the flock, because a lot of times there's going to be about, it's only going to be about 90%, maybe 95% covered with flock. Anything that you can see in between the flock, you're going to see either this brown latex or you're going to see possibly the undercoat of the spray. There you go. See that? And I'm spraying from altitude. And that's it for this nutmeg. Okay, you can see that it gives the terrain a little bit unusual coloring, right? Okay, and then I'm going to go in with some green and basically do the same thing. Let me shake this up. I'll be right back. All right, we go in and we do it again. Okay, I put it on there so light, okay, that uh, it, it won't, it's not a thick coat, it's barely touching it. And the reason why that is, is I don't want it to crack or peel when I go to roll this up, right? This paint will not crack or peel. Now that's really all I wanted to do was give me a little bit of a, a breakup of the lines and uh, highlights. And then the next step is once this dries, once the paint dries here, I'm going to go ahead and start flocking. All right, we're back with my favorite step. This is the flocking step. Um, I put about one third a bowl of water, and then I'm going to add some PVA, uh, basically just Elmer's, right? Uh, it's going to be fairly thick. Just point that out. Uh, and then you can see here I've got two uh, coffee cans here. One has my highlight color. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of a, they call it burnt grass, right? It's got a little bit of, very little bit of, um, very little bit of static grass in there as well, but it's 99% burnt grass. And then in this bucket, I've got blended turf. But also, in the blended turf, I have a very little bit of sawdust. Okay, um, this is going to be my turf, my base coat. That's going to be the, the main coat, I mean. This is going to be my highlighting coat. Uh, this has no texture that needs to be shadowed, so there's not going to be a third color of grass. It's just going to be highlighted with this, blocked with this, and that's it. All right, so let's go ahead and, no, oh, before I get started, I do want to point this out. Because there's roads on the map, that naturally divides the map into zones. So you got like your little zone here, you've got this zone here, you've got this triangular zone there, this zone, that zone, that zone. Okay. I'm only going to do one little zone at a time, and I'm going to go up to the road, and that zone will be done. And then I can move on to the next zone, and the next zone, and then the next zone. So technically, I'm only doing one zone at a time. You probably could use Elmer's straight out of the tub, because it is not, um, it's not pure PVA. It's kind of a, a, a thinned out version of PVA, but I don't know if you can see me, but I am pouring it in here. Pouring it to the point where the jug is going clunk, 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 clunk. I also have another cup of uh, water over there, just in case I needed to add any water. Now, I don't know if you can see that. 
you see that consistency. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a the big brush because that's all I'm ever going to use on this map is this big brush. I have a smaller brush here for detailing things, but I won't ever be I won't be using it. And then we go to mix it. Okay, when I'm done mixing, I'll be right back. All right, guys, I think I had it sitting right at about 50-50, and we don't want that. We want a two to one, two to one. We want it to be a little thicker than water. We don't want it to be a water thickness. I want it to be pretty thick. Okay, let me mix this up. I'll be right back. All right, guys, now we're getting ready to go ahead. and What I'm going to do is I'm going to flock this one little corner here where you can see it. So now when I put the glue on, I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to be very uh, liberal with the glue. And remember, every, just be very careful not to put glue somewhere that you don't want grass to stick to, right? I say grass when I mean flock. But you know what I mean. You can maybe do a little bit more. Okay, now, uh, because I'm not going to be able to take this blanket this canvas. I'm not going to be able to take this canvas and shake it off, you know, uh, like I normally do with a model. I'm not going to be able to do that with this. So I have to be very, I have to be very precise with my flocking. Uh, not so much, not so much the the highlighting, but definitely with the basing. Okay. So the highlighting, and I put it on very thin. Try not to get any clumps like I'm doing right now. Just get in there and kind of break up those clumps because you don't want clumps. Okay, so that's my highlight. Then we go in with our main flock. Try to be very careful on where we place the flock. Now, will there be some extra flock on the map when I am done? Yeah, there will be. Now that's how, now once that dries, then I'll go, well, here. Now I'm just patting it down, breaking up those chunks of flock that didn't break up in my pinching of the flock when I sprinkled it. Um, there we go. And we're gonna let that soak into the glue. Everything should turn a wet look. I mean, you can kind of start to see some of the wetness. 
up here. I don't know if you can see that, but they're start like the glue is starting to shine through. That's perfect. That's that means the, the flock is soaking into the glue, and then once it dries, uh, I'm going to go back over it. Well, first of all, I'm going to clean the edges with a brush, and then I will go back over it and spray it with a sealant. All right. So let me get to flocking. I'm going to flock this thing, and then I'll be right back. All right, guys, I've got the highlights. I've got the flock. I've got it all laid out. And it looks, it already looks really good, don't you think? But what we're going to do now is uh, let this dry. I'm going to let this PVA dry probably about six hours, something like that. Maybe, maybe five hours, something like that. And then we'll see. And then what I'll do is I'll untape the edges and I'll... Uh, flip all the flock to the center and then I'll put it back in a bucket. Alright guys, uh, what I've done was I went ahead and mixed like uh, a one ratio of Elmer's glue with like six of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to thoroughly spray uh, the mat with it. I'm basically just going to wet everything that I can get my hands on. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to get, get all the flock to get wet, basically just sealing it in. I have a hobby sprayer somewhere. Basically now that is drenched. So that section right there, when it dries, should be just fine. Should not even want to come off at all. And 
Now, I do want to point this out. Uh, there was some damage done. You can kind of see there's a couple of pieces of block missing from these sections there. Uh, there's a, there's a, like a whole strip uh, missing over here and then maybe a little bit right there. Basically, it's scattered throughout the entire map. Um, that is, in my opinion, that's okay. Uh, what, what that's going to do, it's going to add a little bit of character, a little bit of light to the map. Because basically what it's doing is it's exposing the brown underneath or whatever spray that I had. Remember I sprayed it with a variety of different colors? All right, guys, now I have thoroughly sprayed this entire thing down. You can see that it's got kind of a shiny look to it. That is the wet PVC, uh, wet PVA glue. Uh, Elmer's sprayed out all over the, the thing. It is kind of a damp, swampy look right now. So now what I'm gonna do is wait for this to dry, uh, and then I'm gonna let it dry overnight, and then we'll come back to it in the morning. All right, guys, welcome back. This is another continuation of my uh, battle mat construction for my Quattro Bra game. Uh, you can see that I covered this road up here. It's dried very well. It's co very concealed. It's disappeared, basically. And then all of this flock out here is holding on really good. There's a few spots here that looks like it's swamp land. Uh, I might have to go in and hit that up with a little bit of clump foliage. Um, I'll do that later down the road. But what I wanted to say is it's held up really good because I've folded this thing up uh, about every, I don't know, 18 inches or so. I folded it up and then folded it over twice. So basically, I folded it up into a section about this big a number of times, you know, boom. And this thing is heavy. It, it's heavier than I expected, but I guess that's because of all the all the uh, caulk that's laid and the glue and the flock. It made the map heavy. That's okay. I'm okay with this. Uh, I'm going to go a different direction with the water. I tried using the uh, DAP Clear and I put it on way too thick. I'm going to say right now, telling you. I put it on so thick because what I was trying to do was get it, get the uh, illusion of thick water or deep water. And what was happening was it wouldn't dry. It just wouldn't dry and it turned brown. So I don't know if it's because, and it didn't stick to this either. As you can see, I've already gone through and I've peeled all of this off because I've decided I'm going to go, okay, maybe not all of it. Here we go. Let's go ahead and peel some of this. Off. All I gotta do is rub it a little bit and it comes right off. Okay, yeah, so that spot and this spot I might have missed. Okay, but what I did was I went through the entire river, peeled off all of the clear because it wasn't drying. And what was also winding up happening was I was noticing that it looked like a wet road. It didn't look like a stream. So I'm going to go a different direction. I'm going to paint it with a gloss real blue. I'm just going to paint it blue. And then I'm going to use some of this that I've never used before. This uh, clear, I mean, it's a clear Elmer's glue. I'm going to not water this down or anything. I'm going to use it. I'm going to try to treat this kind of like my water effects. And we'll see exactly. They say that it glues, that it dries, you know, thick um, and clear. And it kind of looks like uh, slime or something like that. So this is another thing we're going to test. Okay. But first, and I'm not even going to mix this. I want to, this is apple barrel, so it's already watered down. All right, it shook up as much as I care to have it shook up. Now I'm just going to pour it straight onto the table. And then I'm going to use my one inch brush here to kind of, you know, 
paint it on, paint it on. You get the idea. Now I'm not going to paint all the way up to the grass. Uh, I'm going to leave there a little bitty line of brown coastline between the blue and, and the flock. When I say a little bitty line, I'm talking about an eighth of an inch. Now this is a clear, this is a, uh, not a clear, it's a gloss. And it's a water-based water acrylic. I think I need a little bit more. And it's okay if um, a little bit of the brown shines through, even in the middle of the stream. That just means it's it's shallower in that spot and you're seeing the dirt underneath. Now, if you're trying to do like a really deep river, this is just a stream, but if you're trying to do like a really deep river, something that I do on my river pieces, the ones that I make separately, uh, is that I'll do a color like this, the real blue, and then in the middle of it, like right down the center, I'll do another darker blue and it'll give you the impression that it gets deeper in the center. I thought about doing that for the pond, just make it like look like it's deeper in the center, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, this apple barrel paint says that it dries in one hour. So let me get this painted on, and then an hour later, we'll come back and we'll apply some of this Elmer's. All right, I'll catch you then. All right, guys, my river, that looks a lot better. I'm just looking at the camera. That looks a lot better. It's a darker blue than what you see on the camera. That camera shows it kind of as a teal, from what I can tell. But this is a really dark blue, and I'll adjust my colors to make sure everything's right when I come back. But what we're going to do is clean the brush, wait an hour, and we're going to test the uh, Elmer's. Be right back. All right, guys, I am so glad that I have decided not to go with that uh, clear cock. Uh, it didn't work well, but just by painting this, uh, it's worked really well. I've used a gloss, so there's no need to go over it with uh, that clear Elmer's. Now, I will, I will admit that I did test an area right through here with some clear Elmer's just to see if it would have any impact on the appearance, and it actually did not. It, it basically disappeared. Uh, I guess it would be great as a sealer, like if I was sealing my river, I guess that would be fine, but this river looks really good. And I'm gonna take my, uh, this whole outfield looks, it's not finished obviously, but I'm gonna, you know, you get the idea that some figs, some figs, that it's not a river, it's just a creek. Let me go ahead and uh, take this off of the tripod and we'll walk around the mat. So you can see, you can kind of see how it shines a little bit, right? Well, I don't know, let's put some light on the other side of it. See how it shines? That's pretty cool. That's fine, that's with no Elmer's, that's just pure gloss apple barrel paint. Okay, and there's there's the figures, you know, the, the, the stream's only about a base width. Uh, if they were in March column, they could easily be going down down a road, you know. Uh, all right, so let's take a kind of a look at it. Now remember, there's no trees and stuff like that on it at all. This is just uh, just. Flock and cock. There, you can see the grass kind of has a varying shades. It's pretty. They're pretty harsh contrasts. Uh, pretty. They, it's not blended per se. Like when you look at this, you see that the the brown comes to a sharp edge, uh, and that's fine. To me, that's fine. 
I, I like it. If you didn't want that, then when you're applying your flock, you can use your hands to kind of mix it around a little bit. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. That's not something I wanted. Okay, this is going to be the main push in this general area by the French. There's going to be a hill here, which I haven't built yet. And there's going to be a hill over there, but I just wanted to show you the terrain mat. Uh, let me pull it close to the edge of the table. Okay, because uh, the reason why I want to pull it close to the edge of the table is because when I'm when we get down to uh, Nashcon, we're going to be using this on the edge of a table. Hang on. I apologize for that. I didn't realize my microphone was all the way on the other side of the room. Okay, so we're going to pull the map up to the edge of the table. I'm going to take the fabric and we're going to tuck it underneath. It's probably going to be a plywood uh, table. What am, I, what am I looking at here? Yeah, it's probably going to be plywood. And so what's going to wind up happening is we will get a table that looks like it's going to be completely covered. So you're going to have a table flocked all the way to the edge and then over here you're going to have a table once I pull on it, I haven't pulled it tight. But once you pull it tight, you can see how it's going to be flocked. The roads are going to lead right off the table. Yeah. So if you are down in Nashville on June 1st, 2nd, or 3rd, uh, the 2nd is the Saturday. The 1st is Friday, I think. But the 2nd is Saturday. And uh, the, we're going to be running our sessions uh, at the 9 o'clock session. So like 9 to 1. And then we'll be running our second session from 2 to 6, something like that. So we're going to have two games of Quattro Bra, and you'll be able to come down and check out this battle mat. All right, guys. I'm going to put all that, I'm going to roll this up, put it up, and uh, just let you know, you know, it folds up nice and easy. You know, let's get rid of the figures so I don't damage them. Yeah, you can you can roll your roll your mat up, keeping it nice and safe. Doesn't cause any damage. All right, guys. Catch you next time.